Here are the top 20 unknown features on the Galaxy Watch 4 and Watch 4 Classic. There are time codes down in the description to help you find the features you care most about, as well as product links for the watch in case you want to pick one up for yourself. And don't forget to drop a like if you appreciate video time codes. The first thing that I want to quickly point out is that you shouldn't use the body composition measurement if you're pregnant or have a pacemaker. There's a brief warning not to do this the first time you try to use it, but it's easy to miss, so I wanted to point it out before getting into the features. So with that out of the way, let's get started. You can use the watch as a desk clock if you enable developer options, then turn on a specific feature. To enable this, go to settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and tap about watch. Then scroll down a little bit and tap software. Then tap the software version five times until you get developer mode turned on. Then go back to your settings and you'll see developer options has appeared. Tap that. Then enable stay awake when charging. Once that's enabled, the watch face will stay on as long as the watch is charging. Keep in mind, this will obviously make it take longer for the watch to charge, but that feature is there if you want it. And if you're curious about the stand I'm using, it's actually just a little holder for the charger that comes with your Galaxy Watch. The USB side of the cable pushes through this little slot right here, down through the bottom. Then you pull the cord all the way through, and the charging puck just fits right in. And on the bottom, there is a slot to hold the cord in place. And I also picked up this one foot extender cable because the cable on the puck charger is actually pretty short and I needed something a little bit longer to work on my desk. I'll have a link in the description for this cable as well as a couple different versions of this stand if you're interested. Jumping back into developer options and scrolling about halfway down, you'll see an option called window animation scale and then two other options called transition animation scale and animator duration scale. Tapping one of these lets you change various animation speeds and you can even turn the animations off completely. To demonstrate exactly what these are changing, I'm gonna slow down the animations so you can see exactly what it's affecting. Window animation scale changes how fast you switch between pages. Transition animation is when you're moving from one app to another. Animated duration is animating from one screen to another, like when swiping to go back, pulling down the quick toggles, or switching to the app screen. So obviously you wouldn't want to slow those animations down, but you can either make them twice as fast or completely turn them off if you want everything to feel even faster on the watch. The Galaxy Watch 4 supports gestures for either answering calls or dismissing alerts. To enable these, go back to your settings, scroll down and tap advanced features, then scroll down a bit further until you see the gestures section and go ahead and tap the answers call option and turn that on. And this lets you answer calls by shaking your wrist up and down, just like it's shown in this image here. And if you tap tutorial, it'll let you give it a try. So if I lift my arm and shake it in this motion, it'll tell me that I did it right. If you back out of here, you can then tap the dismiss alerts and calls option. And if I turn this on, I can then dismiss calls and alerts by just rotating my wrist back and forth a couple times. If you're running an app in the background, at the bottom of your watch face, you'll get a little icon that's related to that application. So right now it's showing a stopwatch going around. And if I tap that, it'll take me to my stopwatch application because it's currently running. And if I stop the stopwatch and turn it off, then go back, you'll see that that icon disappears. And this works for pretty much any application that can run in the background on your watch. So right now I have a circuit training workout going and it's actually showing this specific workout that it's running. And if I tap this, it'll take me right to the workout screen. And for one last quick example, here's a music icon for the music application that's currently running. If you open up the compass application, then swipe up, then swipe up again, you get the option to turn on location tracking as well as to calibrate it. And if you turn on location tracking, you'll be able to see both your altitude and the barometric pressure. And if you scroll down further, you'll now see your latitude and longitude. The default typing options with the Galaxy Watch 4 and 4 Classic are pretty terrible. You get speech to text, but that's not great if you're in a crowded area and you wanna have a private conversation. You can send a voice recording, but that doesn't work for the same reason as the first option. You can simply send an emoji. You can draw the individual letters, but that's gonna take quite a while. And you also get a T9 text option, which is also a really slow way to type. Fortunately, there is a much faster option if you download an app from the Play Store. So let's go ahead and jump into the Google Play Store, tap the search icon, tap the keyboard, and search for Gboard. Once you've got it typed in, tap search, then tap the result. It's gonna say Gboard, the Google keyboard, then tap install. Once it's installed, you need to enable it in your settings. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into settings, scroll down to general, tap that, then tap input, 
then tap keyboard list and default, then tap default keyboard, and then switch that to Gboard. Now, if you tap the keyboard option again, and go ahead and tap in the message, you're gonna get a full QWERTY style keyboard, and this supports swipe, which is way faster than any of the other typing methods, and this actually makes it possible to send meaningful messages right from your watch. You probably already knew that the Galaxy Watch 4 supports both Samsung Pay and Google Pay, and if you didn't know Google Pay was available, all you have to do is go to the Play Store and download it. Unfortunately for those of you that want to use Google Pay, if you hold the back button, it's only going to open up Samsung Pay, and there's currently no way to change that. However, you can create a double-click shortcut with the Home button to open up Google Pay instead. And if for some reason you use both Samsung Pay and Google Pay, that gives you two quick shortcuts to open up whichever one you prefer to use. To enable this feature, go to Settings, scroll down to Advanced Features, then scroll down to Customize Keys, then tap Double Press. The default option is to go to your most recent application, but if you've installed Google Pay, you can scroll down a little bit and use Google Pay for the shortcut. While we're looking at the Customize Keys options, if you scroll down a bit, you can also change the Press and Hold option for the Home button. By default, that's going to wake up Bixby, but you can change that to enable the Power Off menu instead. However, I highly recommend that you don't do this and that you do keep Bixby enabled, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Scrolling further down in the Customize Keys section, you also get the option to customize a short press on the back key. Now, by default, this is just going to take you back one page, but you can also go back a page by swiping from left to right, so it's kind of redundant to have both a swipe and a key do the same thing. So if I tap this, you can see that I also get the option to show recent applications, and this is much more useful. So now if I press the back key, I can see all of my recent applications. And if I want to dismiss an application, I just have to swipe up. Or if I tap the close all button all the way to the left, I can close all the applications in one shot. If I go ahead and start playing music on my phone, I'll immediately get a music icon that tells me that the music's playing. And if I tap that icon, it'll take me into the media controls where I can see more information about the music that's playing. I can play or pause the music, skip tracks, and even adjust the volume. But if you want this screen to show up automatically on your watch as soon as the music starts playing, instead of having to tap to open the screen, so you can much more quickly adjust things like volume by just scrolling the bezel without even having to look at the watch, then there is a way to do that in the settings. To enable this, we're gonna jump back into settings, then scroll down and tap display. Then scroll down until you see the option called Show Media Controls and tap that. So now if I go back to the watch face screen and start playing music on my phone again, it's going to automatically jump right into the music application. Instead of pulling down the quick toggles and trying to find the power menu to turn the watch off, you can actually just hold both the back and home buttons for a couple seconds and you'll get right back to the same menu. This menu also brings up the option for touch sensitivity, which allows you to use your Galaxy Watch with super thick gloves on. Now, unfortunately, I already have this thick glove on and can't enable touch sensitivity. However, that's where this other unknown feature comes in really handy. And that feature is just how powerful Bixby actually is. And before you balk at that, I just uploaded a video that goes deep into showing you guys exactly why Bixby is so powerful and so useful, especially on the Galaxy Watch 4. It is so much more improved on the Galaxy Watch 4 versus any of Samsung's previous smartwatches, and I highly recommend you check that video out to learn about all of Bixby's powerful features. For now, I'm just gonna use it to turn on touch sensitivity. Turn on touch sensitivity. Sure, I've turned on touch sensitivity. And just like that, I can now interact with my watch with thick gloves on. Jumping back into the quick toggles, I wanna give you guys a quick bonus unknown feature. If you long press any one of these quick toggles, it's going to bring up this little customization menu. Then you can long press them and drag them around to any other screen and drop them wherever you'd like them. This is a great way to make your favorite quick toggles even easier to access. And if you scroll all the way to the end, you get the option to add more quick toggles. And if you delete any from these pages, you can add them back in with the plus icon. And while we're here, I do wanna quickly run through what these toggles even do because some of them aren't quite obvious just by looking at the icon. The first one's pretty obvious. It's a flashlight, turns your watch into a flashlight, and this is actually really bright in a dark room. And if you tap the screen, you can change the brightness of the flashlight and even make it flash. And this isn't an SOS type message. It's literally just flashing on and off. 
And if you tap it again, it just goes back to its max brightness. These two raindrops turn on water lock mode, which prevents any interaction with your screen at all. So this is great to use if you're swimming or maybe even washing dishes. But the way that I personally use this is when I'm changing one of my kids diapers. And that's because if you've ever tried to change a baby's diaper with anything on your wrist, they're always trying to grab at it. And I've had messages sent. I've had emails deleted. I've had them start making phone calls. And that's why I started using this feature anytime I change one of their diapers to stop that from happening. And when you want to turn water lock mode off, just hold the home button for two seconds. This search icon is actually a phone finder. So right now it's going to make my phone start ringing. I can stop it here. This option here is called bedtime mode and this dims your screen way down and it also turns off all of the wake up gestures. So if my screen is off and I rotate my wrist, it's not going to turn the screen on. The bezel is not even going to turn the screen on. Tapping the screen doesn't do anything either. The only way to turn the screen on when I have bedtime mode enabled is to press one of these two buttons. And from here, I can go ahead and turn off bedtime mode. So this mode is extremely useful if you're going to be using sleep tracking with this watch. And by the way, here's another bonus tip that you guys just saw. If you want to quickly just turn the screen off on your watch, all you have to do is cover it with your palm and the screen will go to either ambient mode or turn completely off if you don't have ambient mode enabled. Speaking of ambient mode, that's what this next toggle is. So if you tap that, Ambient mode turns off, and if I put my palm on the screen, you can see that the screen turns completely off. The next one's pretty obvious. It's just the screen brightness adjustment. This toggle lets you quickly put your watch on vibrate only mode, completely silent, or have the sound turned on. This center icon is to enable do not disturb mode. And if you're paired to a Samsung phone, this will sync do not disturb mode with your Samsung phone. If you're paired to a non Samsung Android phone, it only sets do not disturb mode on the watch. This is obviously your settings toggle to quickly jump into your settings. Here's the power menu that I showed you guys earlier. This is a shortcut for individual volume parameters. So you can set it independently for your ringtone, your media, notifications, system sounds, and Bixby. This toggle turns on power saving mode. This cinema looking icon is called theater mode. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see that this turns off your always on display, turns off the raise to wake feature, turns off all system sounds, turns off your alarm sounds, and even turns off timer sounds. And it only does this for a set period of time. The default is two hours, but you can change it to one hour, three hours, or four hours if you'd prefer. And this is specifically for when watching a movie at a theater and you don't want your watch lighting up and bugging you or the people around you. And one more quick tip with theater mode, if you change the duration, it's going to remember that the next time you enable theater mode. So if I disable, then re-enable theater mode, then scroll down, you'll see that it's now set to three hours. This toggle turns on or off your Wi-Fi. This toggle tries to automatically connect to the last pair of earbuds you had connected. If the connection doesn't work, it goes back to the gray color. And if it does work, it'll stay blue and show you how much battery you have left on your wireless earbuds or headphones. And if I tap it again, it'll disconnect. This is the touch sensitivity toggle that I showed you guys a bit earlier. Here's your NFC toggle, and here's your airplane mode toggle. And last but not least, you can turn on or off your GPS. If you have any of these quick toggles enabled that affect the functionality of the watch, you'll actually get little icons at the top showing you which toggles are enabled. So right now I can see that I have do not disturb mode, theater mode, and power saving modes turned on. And this is really useful if you accidentally turn a toggle on and you're wondering why your watch isn't performing quite the way you want it to. You can just look at the top of your watch face and see if you have anything turned on by accident. You get nearly 100% functionality when connected to a non-Samsung Android device. If you want to see everything that's missing when connected to a non-Samsung Android device and some workarounds to get most of that functionality back, you can check out my dedicated video on that by clicking the card above or the link in the description. To enable this next unknown feature, you have to use your phone and open up the Galaxy wearable application that was installed when you set up your Galaxy watch in the first place. Once you open the application, go to watch settings, then advanced features, scroll all the way to the bottom until you see remote connection, then tap to the left side of the toggle. And here you can enable remote connection and also enable this calling mode as well. And what this does is it allows you to send and receive calls and texts from your Galaxy watch 4 even when you're not connected to your phone via Bluetooth. And this also works for the non-LTE version of the watch, so you don't need a mobile plan to do this. The only connection you need for this to work is that the Galaxy Watch 4 or 4 Classic needs to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. And fortunately, when you set your Galaxy Watch 4 up in the first place, all the Wi-Fi networks that you were logged into on your phone were automatically transferred to the watch. And when you lose Bluetooth connection from your phone, by default, the watch will automatically turn on Wi-Fi and connect to the nearest Wi-Fi network. The one caveat with this is that if you're connected to a non-Samsung Android device, 
You lose the ability to remotely make or receive phone calls. Fortunately, you can still remotely send and receive texts. And speaking of messages, if you're in your messages application and you're in a specific text with either a person or a group of people, then you scroll all the way down to the bottom, then back up just a little bit, you can see that you get the option to send your exact GPS location to the people in that message. And this is incredibly useful for trying to meet up with people in a busy place like at a theme park. If you find yourself missing notifications when you have headphones on, there's a setting in the Galaxy Watch 4 that can help you with that. Just open up your settings application, then tap notifications, then scroll down until you see an option called read notifications aloud and turn that on. What this is going to do is automatically read the notifications out loud in your headphones when they come in. And in case you're wondering, this only reads notifications while the headphones are connected. As soon as the headphones are disconnected, it's no longer going Going to read the notifications out loud. By default, touch to wake up is turned off on the Galaxy Watch 4 and 4 Classic, so no matter how much I touch the screen, it's not going to wake it up. If you do want it to wake up by touching the screen instead of just with your wrist turning or with the bezel or one of the buttons, then you can do that by going to settings, scroll down to display, then scroll down until you see touch screen to wake. Once this is enabled, if I turn the screen off, then tap the screen, it'll wake back up. One important thing to know about this though is that it keeps the touch sensitivity on the screen active all the time, so it will slightly reduce your battery life. For this next feature, we have to jump back into the Galaxy Wearable application on the phone, then go to Watch Settings, Advanced Features, then tap SOS. This is an incredible safety feature that has two parts to it. The first part is activated when you triple press the home key. This is gonna send a message to any of your emergency contacts that tells them that you need emergency help. It's also going to share your GPS location and it's going to be your active GPS location, which means they're going to be able to follow you around, which is especially useful in an extreme scenario where you maybe get abducted. The other thing it's going to do is make an SOS call to any emergency contact you choose. And this call is going to be made at the lowest audible volume to help keep you safe. If you tap the text, you get another option as well. So if I enable this and agree to the conditions, I also get the option to have a countdown timer show up before sending those messages. So if I go to my watch and I triple press the home button, it's going to give me a few seconds to cancel that. And this is a great feature to turn on if you don't want to accidentally be making emergency calls. And in case you're wondering, 911 can be one of your emergency contacts. The second part to this SOS safety feature is hard fall detection. And what this does is use the accelerometers in your watch to determine if you've had a hard fall. This could be something like falling off a mountain bike on a trail or even getting in a car accident. And if the hard fall is detected, you're going to get a notification on your watch. And if you don't dismiss that notification within 60 seconds, then it's going to send the SOS message to your emergency contacts as well as make the emergency call. And this is also incredibly useful for someone who may be elderly and prone to falling. This could literally save their life if they have this feature turned on. By default, sleep tracking gives you a decent amount of information about how well you slept, but if you want an even more in-depth analysis, there's a couple extra features you can turn on. To do this, you'll have to open up the Samsung Health application on your phone, then scroll down to sleep, tap that, and while you're on this page, tap the three dots in the upper right corner, then you'll see these other options here called blood oxygen during sleep and snore detection. Blood oxygen during sleep is going to track your blood oxygen continuously as you sleep. And it'll even give you your minimum and maximum blood oxygen levels. And this could be really helpful in determining if you have something called sleep apnea, which is where you stop breathing periodically while you sleep. And in case you're curious, if you turn this feature on, here's what that graph is going to look like. And while I do have one dip here down to 87%, I'm not too concerned about it because that could have just been the watch sliding up for part of the measurement while I was sleeping. But if you see something that looks concerning to you, then definitely consult your doctor to do some follow-up testing. Snore detection is just that. It detects if you're snoring at night, but you could also have it record audio so you can actually hear yourself snoring as well. And that recording is done with your phone, so you will need to have your phone near you when you're sleeping. And keep in mind, since your phone's gonna be using its microphone all night to listen for snoring, it will be best to keep the phone on a charger. As far as snoring data, I don't have any because I don't snore, but if I did, this is where that data would show up. By default, when tracking an exercise, if you swipe over and just finish that exercise, it's going to save it as a single exercise session. But that's not very useful for people who do a bunch of different workouts in a single session. Like let's say you go to the gym and you start on the treadmill, but then you do some bicep curls and then maybe some leg presses and a bunch of other things in that single workout session, you'll probably want to combine all of those workouts into one session. And fortunately, there is a way to do that. So I've started a new exercise I'm gonna go ahead and swipe over and instead of finishing this exercise and starting the next one, I'm going to pause this exercise, 
Then I'm going to tap new up here in the top left corner. Now I'm going to choose a different exercise. This time we'll go with weight machine. And let's say I use the weight machine for a bit, finish that exercise, I'm gonna pause it again and tap new. And we're gonna choose a third workout. Let's go with a treadmill and we'll finish with that workout. Now this saves as a single session comprised of three workouts. And if I scroll down, I can see that I was on the treadmill. And before that I was doing a weight machine. And before that I was cycling. Now those workouts I just showed you were too short to see any extra information. But if you actually did a real workout for any meaningful amount of time, then tapped that workout within that session, you'd be able to see more details about that specific workout. And another quick tip, if you tap the heart rate zone section, it'll actually switch to a bar graph to show you exactly how long you're in each of these zones. While we're talking about exercise tracking, I do want to show you guys a couple bonus unknown features with the exercise tracking application. First, if you ever want to pause or resume a workout, all you have to do is hold the back button for a couple seconds. So you can see I just resumed the workout. If I hold it again, I then pause the workout. An even more useful unknown feature is that you can actually swipe up on this information screen and get even more details about your workout. And then you can swipe up again and see even more details swipe up again, and you can even see your symmetry with your running. And what this is showing is how much time you're spending on each foot. And this will help you determine if you're favoring one leg over the other. And these information screens change depending on which workout you're doing. So obviously, if you're weightlifting, you're not going to see this asymmetry screen. And if I swipe back up, I can actually customize both of these information screens. To do that, I just have to swipe to the left and then go to settings tap workout screen, then tap the word data screen one or data screen two. Now data screen one is the screen that was on top and data screen two is the screen that showed up when I swiped up once. So if I tap one of these, I can choose the data screen layout. So if I choose this one, that's going to give me a ton of information. And if I tap one of the cells, I can choose something different to show. And as you can see, there are a bunch of different options. And if I go to data screen two, you'll see that I get all of the same options. And these settings are specific to each workout. So since this is the running workout, I also get the asymmetry option. I can turn that screen off if I'd like. But if I switch to a different workout, I can have a completely different set of information that's shown on these two screens. So this really lets you fully customize how you want to track each and every workout. If you find that you're not noticing the vibrations when notifications come in on your watch, then you can actually make some adjustments in settings to make that easier to notice. So let's go ahead and jump into settings, then scroll down to sounds and vibrations, then scroll down until you see vibration and tap that and switch it from a short vibration to a long vibration. And this is going to make the vibration much more noticeable. Alternatively, you can scroll down a bit further and if it's set to a light vibration, you can actually switch that to a strong vibration and that'll make it even more noticeable. And you can play around with these two settings as well. So perhaps a strong but short vibration is good enough for you. If you've browsed through the watch faces that come on your Galaxy Watch 4, you've probably noticed this little avatar watch face. And if you customized it, you could see that you either get this option of a girl or this option of a guy. And if you selected one of them, you probably noticed that they do different animations if you tap the screen. And you've probably even noticed that there's new animations when you have an unread notification. But you may not have known that these avatars are completely customizable if you have a Samsung device. To do this, we have to go back to the Galaxy Wearable application on the phone. So here we are back in the Galaxy Wearable application. We're gonna go ahead and tap watch faces, tap customize on the AR emoji watch face. And down here, you see that you get the option to add a new AR emoji. And by default, you get some starter emojis that you could pick from, or you can create a new one that looks like you by using the camera or use an existing image to create one of someone else. If you decide to create a new AR emoji, you get a ton of different options for customizability. You can select from a ton of different hairstyles. You can select from a bunch of different hair colors, and you can even do the same for facial hair. You can change the face structure from a bunch of presets, or you can tap these little settings here and make micro adjustments to the face as well, which is really incredible. You can then add makeup, make adjustments to the eyebrows, adjustments to the eyes, add eye makeup, make adjustments to the nose, the lips, even put lipstick on, change the ears, and even add prosthetics. And once you've chosen what your AR emoji looks like, you can then tap this style tab on the bottom and select from a bunch of different outfits. And while many of the outfits and accessories are free, you can buy some more if you want to. 
And if you want to get really crazy with the clothes, you can actually design your own. Once you've created a new air emoji, it appears down below and you just have to tap it to have it transferred to the watch. And just like that, I have a new AR emoji. And now time for some rapid fire bonus features. If you press both the back and home buttons at the same time quickly, then you'll actually take a screenshot and that screenshot will get sent right to your phone. If you want to customize your tiles, all you have to do is long press one of them until it vibrates, then long press again and drag it wherever you'd like it. Some of the tiles can also be modified. If I tap this edit button here, then I get the option to delete an exercise, then I can add a different exercise in if I'd prefer, and I can also long press and reorient them however I'd like. When I'm done modifying the tile, I just swipe back to go back. This takes me back to the main editing page, and then I can swipe back again, and that takes me out of the editing mode. If you don't like the order of your applications, you can rearrange them however you'd like. Just long press an application, and when it vibrates, move it to wherever you'd like it to be. And modifying those app orientations are easier in the Galaxy Wearable application. If you tap apps, then tap reorder apps, it's a lot faster to just long press and drag these ones wherever you'd like. If you guys want to see more in-depth Galaxy Watch 4 coverage, you can click or tap the playlist at the top left corner of your screen. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my deep dive coverage of the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and Galaxy Z Fold 3. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.